Yo, this is New Jack, the original gangster, and right now you're listening to In Your Head Online.com. Believe it. If you don't, I'll stab your ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we are back here at In Your Head. We got a special guest here. No, I, I sure went over this with him before your hand, but I wanted to say this because it's a week before Christmas. We've got Santa Claus with us. <laughs> I love it. Yo, 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 yo. Give me a fucking shot. I want Jaeger, I want Slots, and I want him on my cock. Oh, Hi. that was sweet. I'm going to cut that out and play that for our Christmas theme. Well, you definitely should. Just cut out the cock, that's all. Hmm. Don't know what I mean. Exactly. <laughs> it's balls. What the fuck's going on? I yeah. know. We got balls Mahoney here with us. Oh, man. The chair swinging freak. If you guys want to call in, it's 1-508-644-8503. And he, you're going to be able to it's see your him. funeral. If you call in, man, he's not liable for any damage I might cause your brain or your psyche. So call ahead. This going to be pretty awesome. I'm looking I forward to this. No, you're so looking forward to what? To talking to you. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'll shut up. You talk. <laughs> no, that's all right. I'm looking forward to stream rising, too. I think each show, uh, each, some of the shows have a little problems, but each show I think gets uh, better and better. Yeah, I have to say the same thing, honestly. Uh, and, and, you know, talking calmly, you know, from the first one as we've been going on, yeah, each one's been running more smooth and getting better, you know, as a whole. You know what I mean? Uh, the people are getting used to the newer faces that we have there. Um, you know, everyone knows us, you know, and obviously they're coming out to see all of us in one spot again, which is really cool. I mean, I don't know who's having more fun, you know, the fans or us in the locker room. You know, I know in Pittsburgh I was probably having a lot more fun than everybody's dressing room. So, <laughs> um, uh, you know, you can use your own imaginations on that one. You know, um, I mean, the worst time for me was that match because those poor kids were lucky that I just took it, that I didn't make it go longer and made them suffer worse, you know. Um, <laughs> it could have been a lot worse on them poor kids. Yeah. yeah. We could have really jacked them up bad. I could have really jacked them up bad. We didn't even have a chance to do anything to them. <laughs> Yeah. Do you think that's what? So, yeah, yeah. I, I'm really, look, I'm really looking forward to the 29th. You know why? Why do I'm looking forward to the 29th? Pittsburgh. I had to drive all the way out there with my wife and kid. It took me like eight and a half hours to get out there because the kid was awake for 90 percent of the drive. I didn't sleep. I got like two hours of sleep, and then we woke up at the fan fest. I came back to the hotel room. I laid down. By the time I was asleep, he goes, "All right, we gotta leave." I'm like, "Uh." You know, the Phillies, the Philly building's 50 minutes from my house, so, you know, and besides, I have all my connections here, so I'll be wide awake and raring to go. Oh, <laughs> and again, use your own imagination. Yeah. That, that I, concept right there. Are you sure who, have you found out who you'll be in the ring with yet, or does that, is that even uh, to you? No, as of right now, me and me are not. We don't have an opponent scheduled. I think after the last match, maybe some people are, you know, a little leery. Um, you know, with me and Meany, you get the best of both worlds. You know, Meany and his comedy is great. Then you get me. I'm kind of funny, you know, but I'm, I'm a maniac, you know. I mean, <laughs> there's, there's not much out there that I won't do. And this is the truth. The only thing I will not do in the ring is a ladder match. I am scared to death of ladders. Seriously, uh, I've done two in my life, and both against Sandman, and both of them I broke my nose in. Not four minutes into the match, from a bulldog on the ladder. So I saw a ladder, and I froze up, boom, and I smashed my face in the ladder and broke my nose. I can't even go up on a little step ladder, three steps, and I start shaking like only when I was uh, five. I fell off an uh, uh, extension ladder, helped my grandfather paint a house, and then, boom, and ever since then, I can't do a ladder. Yeah, you know, but me... The hell, look at me, I ain't pretty, you know? Look at my head, look at my arm, I don't care. I just got a, uh, I just had a gas in my left arm from a cage match December 1st. That took, uh, six stitches inside the clothes up and 22 staples on my left bicep. So I have a nice little wound for everybody to see. It should be still pink and poofy and ugly and scabbed because it was got infected. Because I ripped out some staples because I'm you know, playing with my kid and I started bleeding again and I had to go back. You know, and that was just a little family showcase match. Now imagine an extreme rising one. <laughs> <laughs> this, 
You said you'll do anything. Have you ever come up to somebody and said, this is something, this is a match I want to do, this is a, something I want to do in the match, and someone just, like, looked at you and said, there's no way I'm doing that? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it happens all the time. Uh, let's see, you know what, not much easy dub, because, you know, back in the easy dub days, we were all insane, you know, I mean... It couldn't stop me. I mean, I, I'll give you an example. Like, when the, when the Flaming Cable thing happened, you know, you know, everyone loved it. And then we, the next week after the first one, it was the house show. And so they're like, all right, 3D, I'm a dope Flaming Cable. They're like, what? Dude, it's a house show. I'm like, yeah, Flaming Cable. And they're like, why? I'm like, what do you mean, why? Because we're going to do a Flaming Cable. That's why. We're going to fucking top each match, you know? And he's like, all right. So we did it that night, we did it the next day, we did it the TV. Sunday, you know, 350 people, really bad show. All right, 3D, go, oh, flaming change. <laughs> He's like, will you stop? And I didn't stop for like four months. I just kept taking it every night, you know. But again, that was easy thought. No, there's been plenty of times on Indies where names have said, I remember Al Snow was like, uh, Balls, we don't need to do that. I'm like, come on. He's like, no, we're not doing that. I'm like, come on, Al. He's like, John, we're not doing that. I'm like, ah. Oh. You know, Perry Saturn once says, no, balls, we don't need that kind of a, uh, a bump. I'm like, oh, okay, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, my favorite guys are like, Sapu, I, like, I want to do this. Hey, and then I can do this. Yeah, and then I can, know. And then it just gets worse and worse or better and better, you know, uh-huh. being your standpoint. <laughs> um, you know, but, yeah, it does happen a lot, you know. I mean, especially now, I mean, I have extreme rising, you know, which lets me be me. Um there's another thing happening in a few months where they're just going to let me be my crazy self. You know, in fact, the guy's already scared, so I'm going to call him up a couple times. Look, I got another idea for that match. And he's like, dude, come on, relax. I'm like, no, you wanted hardcore balls. This is what you get. You know, don't don't tell me now that, you know, you don't want it. You know, that's what you're paying me for. Shut up. Now, listen, this is what I'm adding to it. He's like, dude, the guy don't want it. I'm like, well, then I'm looking for someone else. And he's like, oh, my God, you know, so he's already regretting it. But there's nothing he can do about it. He's sending a deposit already. <laughs> uh, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, it happens, but that's why I love Extreme Rising. They're not going to tell me no. You yeah. know, I hope they're not going to tell me no. Oh. You know, and they better not tell me no in Philly, you know. I mean, me and me in Philly, I mean, come on, that's going to be great, you know. We're actually going to tag in Philly for the first time. Really tag. Oh, I can't wait. I'm psyched. I'm so excited. I really am, dude. It's like, what? Less than 10 days away. I'm pumped. Yeah. But how did I'm that tag team my, like... my connections are pumped, yeah. <laughs> how did that tag team come what? about? How did the tag team come about, you and, uh, you and, um... Um, you? well, you know, me and Axel did the match. Me and Axel were going to team, and Axel was driving home, and he got into a car accident and broke his sternum. So he couldn't make the next show. So that night they took, you know, Shane, uh, Shane took me aside and was like, "Look, uh, we had an idea to put you and Nini together. You know, like, like not the Blue World Order, but like I'm like Blue Balls. That's fucking great. Let's do it." You know, I was immediately into it because back, in fact, back a long time ago, before I even got hired by ECW, uh, Raven had the idea of bringing me in as the Boo Nini. You know, because I was Boo Bradley right, down yeah. in Smoky Mountain. You know, so he wanted me to be the Blue Meanie. He's like, uh, brother, the Blue Meanie. And I was like, no, I don't think so. You know, because I knew what Meanie was doing at that time. And I had a lot of pride and yeah. I wanted to come in and work. You know, I was like, no, I don't. You know, I was like, no, you'll work. I go, no, I'm going to be part of your little flock, Scotty. And you're going to make me into a comedy sideshow. You know, I come out and do something stupid. No, I don't want that. You know, I want to come in and make an impact. I want to come in and be, me. you know, he's like, yeah, I guess so. He goes, well, that would be great. I'm like, no, it would be phenomenal if these guys would tag us. But you want me to be a part of that whole little flock thing? No, you know. Mm-hmm. But I got to give it to Raven because Raven came up with Balls Mahoney. He's the one who named me. So thank you, Scotty. You know? uh, <laughs> if people always say, well, oh. even himself, he'll say that he, he's a genius. Do uh, you, you think? Uh, for oh the rest no, of he's a genius. Or... So am I, though. You know that that's the scary thing. Like it's like Raven does have a genius IQ. So do I. How scary is that? Like, seriously, I'm, I'm measured. I'm at the low genius IQ level on the IQ scale. That that was when I was in, what, like, seventh grade or eighth grade when I was measured. Yeah. And now look at what I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, my five-year-old, he's another one. He's, like, scary smart. He knows sign language. 
speaks some, he speaks some Spanish. I'm not joking, dude. Really? He's, he's, he's no joke. I have my son Christopher. He, he's scared. He's five years old. He speaks some Spanish. Knows some sign language. He, he spoke some German the other day. He's in one of those Montessori schools. You know, that's, we got lucky to get him into one of them yeah. by accident. Oh yeah, the kid. And then he, then just before, actually, just before I, I got in the car, see, this is the thing. Normally, at the house, if I'm doing an interview, I go outside, so I'm not keeping everybody up. But everyone's just going to sleep right now. My wife, my son, my mom in her room, she's going to bed. And we just had a new neighbor move in, not what, uh, Monday. And she came and introduced herself to me. Her name's Heather. She got red hair. She's a single mom. Now, right there, let me stop. And then my, my best friend Dan will tell you this, because he met her the same day. And he goes, hey, how you doing? And he looked back and he goes, you're so fucked. Because all throughout my life, I had a a weakness for girls with red hair and same build that she had. And he's like, you're fucked it up. I'm like, back to sure. But I don't think the way for her to get to know me, because she has a five-year-old son, too, and she lives literally next door to me, not like 12 feet from my room, you know? I don't think the way she should get to know me is, yeah, me and my daughter is going to be in Philly, and I'll be with all kinds of stuff, and me and me are going to be going crazy. Ah! I don't think she needs to hear that tonight, do you? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. No, I don't think that would be conducive to yes. a good relationship <laughs> and a good, you know, parent and child friendship there. Mm. And that's all it would be on my end. But seriously, I want my son to have friends, you know. That's not a good thing. <laughs> She'll be scared to death. What? Get away from me. I'm doing it now. Hold on. Mm. Fuck you. Hi. Hold on. All and right. Both people here. And... Enter. I seriously just texted that person. Fuck you! I'm doing an interview. <laughs> Call me back. I, so, yeah. What were we talking about? Oh yeah, my neighbor. I don't think that would have been good. Yeah, no. but Philly. Yeah, I can't wait. We're gonna be blowing the roof off that place. I yeah. can't wait. What? It doesn't matter who we work. You know what? It really, to me, it doesn't matter who we work. Because whoever we work, whether it be some new guys or whether it be a really good tag team, I mean, the better the tag team, the better the match is going to be. But you can give me nothing in there, and me and me are going to just fucking tear it down. I promise you. Mm -hmm. Did you, you know what would even be better? Put me, balls, and axle together. Mm -hmm. I think that would be insanity. Yeah. You know, but I think that might be too much. I don't know. That's not up to me. That's up to the office, you know, but you take, I like me and me. Would you take that's, 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 that, it, It's fun. <laughs> do you take pride in that, you know, if you go out there with somebody uh, that you might not think uh, you're, you never worked with, whatever, and just, you know, have a fun match at the that's going to entertain the crowd, a fun match, a crazy match, whatever kind of match it's going to be? Yeah. Of course I do. I, 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 of course it gives me pride. Yeah, a lot of, you know, it, it gets to the point like at least now in my career people realize, all right, you know, he, he knows what he's doing. He's really good, whatever, you know what I mean? And, yeah, when at one point there was, you know, I, and I'll be a little conceited right now, there was a point in my career where I, a lot of people consider me one of the best big men in the business at the time period, you know, whether in the world, you know. And at one time, I, I really do think I was. In fact, my friend just put together a DVD, like a best of DVD, and there was a couple matches with RVD on there. And I'm like, God damn, I could move for a big guy. And I was 360 then, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, shit, how the hell did I do that back then? And you know, I'm not as broken. Now, well, I wasn't as broken then as I am now. But still, even me broken, I'm, I'm better than most people, I guess, you know? But yeah, it's great. I just had these little matches this past weekend. Uh, well, six minute match had some comedy in it, and then we got, and I was actually a bad guy. So picture that. I'm trying to be a bad guy, and the people are booing me, trying to be nice. You know, <laughs> they're realizing right. I'm a heel, uh -huh. and they don't want to boo me, and halfway through it, they were cheering us. And uh, one of my tag partners was the company's biggest heel, and they're cheering all of us. And the promoter's looking at me going, what are you doing? I'm like, I mean, you know, fuck you, dude. And I said that really loud, and the crowd loved it even more. Mm -hmm. You know, and the kids were working. I wasn't going to do much. All of a sudden, during the I wouldn't tag out for like 10 minutes. I'm doing all these old, like, moves and spots. And the kid in the room, he's having a blast, and he didn't expect any of it, you know? And it went really well, I thought so. And he was like, dude, that match was awesome. Everyone was like, dude, that match was awesome. Look at me, where'd that come from? I don't have any fun, dude. What do you mean, where'd it come from? I don't get to do that too much anymore, you know? Yeah, I was, 
you brought up our you brought up RVD because I really remember because I was a huge ECW fan. I graduated '94, so it was like, you know, it was really the time when it took off and everything. But you and uh, you and RVD, yeah. that was the one that really like like got my attention. Like this guy's really good, Balls Mahoney. Do you think that was really which, which when we're talking about the Anarchy Rules match? Yeah, but um, it might have been. The... I love the dick. Uh oh, we got someone calling in. <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> Because anybody who knows me knows one of my favorite things to do is to eat pussy. So, nice talk. Uh There's probably, you know what, hold on. You know what, before another gay rumor ever happens again, because it's happened to me over the years, because especially now, because I, with my my real, like, love of my life, and I have a kid and I don't cheat anymore, I probably slept with more women than any 25 people in the world, okay? So stop. I'm probably I'm probably on the level with Gene Simmons, the kind of bitches I fucked, okay? So shut up. So go on with your question. All right, well, that guy hang up. we got some other people here. Uh, 253 area code, who are you? Okay, so you were saying, I'm sorry. Well, I was just, I was really just putting you over that your match with RVD was one I thought that really, like, right away showed, like, man, this guy's, like, this guy's really good. And uh, do you think you fit in with ECW right away? Because there are some guys that would be there, and like the fans wouldn't take to them. They'd have to really, you know, go all out for for a while before the fans would start to like. But you seemed like a guy. As soon as you got there, people really liked you. Yeah. Well, you know what? When I first got there, though, for the first like six to eight months, it was really hard because you see, you probably don't remember this. A lot of people don't because once I started, once they started letting me be myself. You know, and I started doing the balls, balls punches, you know, then yeah. people forgot about, dude, the first six, eight months, balls money wasn't me, okay? That's the thing, like, you, the, the balls money that everyone knows, that's me, you know? I picked out my shirts, I, you know, I, I all the shirts I wore, I wore because I'm either friends with people in the band, I love the design, uh, when I wear King Diamond, it's because I think King Diamond is the, one of the best entertainers in the world, plus for a long time he was a card carry member, Kirk of Satan, just like I am. So that's that's a big hit there. Um, the immolation first in hell shirt. I'm, I'm in the death metal. I'm in the heavy metal in the way. And first in hell, I mean, come on, I'm a Satanist. You know, of course I'm going to be the first one to go to hell, and it's going to be a blast because when I get down there with all the bad shit I've done in my world, I'm going to be freaking running shit. So that's going to be fun, you know. But uh, you know, yeah. When I was first there, I was a gay sadomasochistic biker. <laughs> now mm-hmm. picture that. For a second, uh-huh. okay, a gay sadomasochistic biker. So I would get pounded in the corner and start touching myself, going, "Oh yeah, I love it." And I tried, man. I really tried. And I just, after like four months, I'm like, "Paul, this sucks, dude." Because the boys are like, some of the like the ECW regulars didn't want to get in the ring with me at all. Uh-huh. So they're beginning because they kind of thought I might have been really right, you're bagel, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. But finally, I just let him. Rick Rude was like, dude, he can work. And Candido all the time was like, dude, what are you doing? He can work. Let him be himself. And Rick Rude was the first one. He goes, Paulie, they put me with uh, Anthony, Paul Anthony, out in, ironically, Pittsburgh, uh, in the Pittsburgh area. And they're like, and he's like, dude, let him just be himself and be like he's healed tonight. You know, and Rick Rude, he goes, hey, hey, Paul. So I'm like, what? He gives me the thumbs up. He goes, go be yourself tonight. I'm like, sweet. So I'm like, all right, I scratch that. This is what we're doing. He's like, hey, wait. I'm like, no, listen to me. Just trust me. I've been watching you. Just listen. And, you know, he's like, well, you know, 10 minutes. I'm like, fuck 10 minutes. Just come on. Trust me. It'll be awesome. So we ended up doing something like 22, and I got back, and he's like, dude, that was great. I'm like, I know. Thank you so much. And everyone's like, dude, where have you been? I'm like, hey, let me be myself. And Paul was like, all right, just do whatever you want. And then I switched my music to Big Balls. And he goes, why'd you do that? I'm like, because I'm going to have the crowd ch- ch- uh, sing the song. He goes, what are you talking about? I go, watch. When I'm over, I'll have that crowd singing the song. Uh, you think I pulled that off or what? No, oh, definitely. You know? Uh-huh. Yeah, so there you go. Mm-hmm. So we have any calls? Do we have any questions from any fans out there? Yeah, we did. I'm have... interested. Yeah, we did. They keep hanging up. They're scared. The one guy just called in. Oh, and he, just, he, just, he just last. He just... Hung up the phone. He, he like said something about you like a you know, big dick and hung up the phone. Maybe oh, you yeah, know what yeah. though. Maybe if you're gonna prank he, he call, don't meant, waste time. If someone has a serious question for me, please ask. He might have meant uh, he might have meant Dudley though. Now that I think about it. <laughs> 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 no, 
No, nothing. Uh, Listen, some of you, one of you guys out there, come on. Someone's got to have a decent We've well, got a bunch of questions here on the Facebook page. Uh, Will Bozart, right. he's got a uh, uh, Fuck, Mary Kill, Joel Gertner, Fred Phelps, and Virgil. We could probably skip some of these. Uh, the old F. Mary Kill uh, question. I didn't even hear the question. What was the question? Ah, we'll skip that one. Believe me, you don't. You don't want really. Uh, let's see. Uh, Vic oh, wants. Okay. Vic wants to know. Uh, was your deal with New Jack legit? Yeah, it is. It is. It, it really is. There's some. Uh, there's some issues there. Um, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail with that. All right, because mm -hmm. this is serious. Uh, you know, when you talk about New Jack, and I'm not talking about the character of New Jack. I'm talking about the person. Okay. Everybody who knows New Jack knows he's a legit guy. Well, you know, I may be funny. I may talk a big game. Well, New Jack will tell you I'm a legit guy, too. Okay? This is for real. Why do you think we haven't been in the ring with each other? Nobody wants to do it. I'm willing to do it. He's willing to do it. I'm willing to, we're both willing to sign waivers for to indemnify whoever puts it on. I think we're kind of into doing it in front of people, actually. I think we're both of that mind. Like, we can tolerate being around each other now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, at, in Pittsburgh, we, you know, what's up? What's up? That was it. You know what I'm saying? But if someone puts us out there and we get a payday, I'm sure we're going to do it. I don't think people are ready for what's going to happen because it's not what you think is going to happen. You know? But, yeah, it's legit. It's 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, you said and uh, if I'm saying it like this, you know, I mean, I got a five-year-old, and he means everything to me. And, you know, look, everyone knows I was best friends with Candida, right? My son is named Christopher. When Chris died, my grandmother died, and two weeks later, Chris died, uh, Candida, right? That destroyed me. It really did. I, I cried for because I was taking care of my grandmother the last five years of her life. You know, I was the one with her every day, cooking for her, making sure she would get a little exercise, you know, doing puzzles with her, spending all all her time was spent with me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I had to go to Japan. So, and I was taking such good care of her, we put her in a care home, and they couldn't take the care of her that I was. So they actually got her a hospital room, you know, not like laying in a bed in a hospital room, but a hospital room, you know, where she could get up, walk around at my mom's hospital. I was gone for four days. I came back and she was dead because she thought I wasn't coming back and she gave up the ghost and died. That still, I'm, I'm actually have a tear. I'm, I'm, I have tears running down my face right now, okay? Because mm -hmm. all she ever wanted to know was when is she going to have a grandson, you know? When is she going to have a great grand? You know, when am I going to have a kid for her to spoil, you know? And now I do. And she never got to see it, you know? And then two weeks later, Candido up and dies on me. That's why I got the tattoo on my right arm. That's the arm I carried the coffin with. That's why I named my son Christopher. And if me and New Jack actually have it out, there's a chance I might not see him again, you know? There's also a chance that Jack might not see people again. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's that legit. Yeah. And I don't think we need to comment on that anymore. Um, were you and I, Candido, and you and Chris, were you friends uh, before wrestling, or after you got into wrestling? Yeah, actually, we met. <laughs> I was, uh, I, I, even though I was, I was a big kid my whole life. Like, when I was in kindergarten, I weighed a buck fifty, and that's that's the truth. Yeah. You know, when I was my son's age, I was 100 pounds. He's uh, 55 or 60 right now, you know? And I don't want him being like I was a fat kid, you know? And I met Chris when I was 10, and uh, playing baseball, you know, on, like, you know, Little League Baseball. And he had on a hot rod. Or no, wait, sorry. We were 11, and it was baseball, and he had a hot rod shirt on. And that was his uniform. He had baseball pants on, a hot rod shirt, his hat on sideways, and his glove on the wrong hand. He knew how to play baseball. It was his parents making him do a sport other than pro wrestling. And I was a pro wrestling freak. I used to watch it with my grandfather, who died when I was 10, and I met him a year later. And we just started talking wrestling, and there just happened to be a wrestling show two weeks later in Convention Hall. So we're talking wrestling the entire time. Like, he, when when his team was, was, like, in the field, he didn't play in the field. You know, he was he was a pinch hitter because he wasn't that good, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, he came over and sat on our bench, and we would talk wrestling, and his coach was yelling at him. In fact, when he got up to bat, he walked. I played first 
face, and he's talking to me, and he's got to lead. I called timeout. I went to the pitcher, got the ball. I tagged him out, and he refused to leave because he was talking to me. And so at the, end of the, at the end of the game, we exchanged phone numbers, and I found out he lived five blocks away. So we walked, met, and he took me into his little office room there, and I saw all these old wrestling posters, and it all had Chuck Richards on it. And I'm like, hey, crazy Chuck. He goes, you know my grandfather? I'm like, oh, shut the hell up. That's not your grandfather. And he goes, no, it is. The show in Convention Hall in, in two weeks is my grandfather's show. He goes, shut up, dude. You're lying. He goes, didn't you say you wanted to be a pro wrestler? I go, yeah, it's my dream. He goes, well, why don't you come to the show at 12, and we'll meet you there. We'll, you know, come not, come inside, and you'll set up to help, uh, that, uh, help us set up the ring. And I'm like, oh, whatever. But we still hung out the rest of that day, and, it, and, and his mom told me that. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know, like, here's my dream. So I showed up, you know, like you saw him about eight more times. I showed up when I was told to. And there's Chuck. And, you know, the ring is already pretty much up because I got there late. And Chuck's like, so this is the big candy. You were telling me that. Get him in the ring and beat the living shit out of me. <laughs> Hard for like 15, 20 minutes. And it seemed like a lifetime, you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I got tears coming out of my eye, but I'm still taking it. Yeah, he's tough enough. Let's teach him how to bump, you know. Next day, I know him. Taking bumps, you know. Yeah, it went on from there, man. Yeah, I mean, we lived five blocks from each other, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we saw each other every day, forever, you know. Sure, yeah, I, mean, I was the first one to meet Tammy. I met really? Tammy before she even looked like Tammy said, you know, like Sonny. I knew what she looked like. She was still gorgeous, please, but she didn't look, you know, like that, you know. Yeah. I met her when she was 17. You know, His first and only real girlfriend. Yeah. Um, Dude, as a wrestling fan, my son. Funny. I don't mean to talk to all the no, that's fine. Chris Ross's virginity to Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it could be, you could do a lot worse than to fuck your first girl. It's fucking Tammy. You right, know? right. Uh, think about that yeah. for a second. Mm. Yeah, Sonny. I don't think I fucked ten girls in my entire life that look that good. I'd say it's all downhill from there, though. Yeah, but you know, look at look at the train wreck we've all became since then. You know, I'm not like I'm a spring chicken anymore. Most of the girls I bang look at me now and go, "Yeah, run away!" You know, and I'd be limping up to them. Hey, come back! <laughs> Hold on, let me let me take a Viagra. Hey, you're all ready. <laughs> See, we got a caller on the line. Uh, who are you? Hello. This is this is a stranger. Are you with a guest right now? Or? Yes, ba- like- yeah, we got Balls Mahoney on the line. Yeah, how you doing, Mahoney. man? What? How are you hey, doing? You sound like a you crazy. Doing? You sound like a crazy mother. Yeah. From the I'm East a crazy M- You can say it. I'm a crazy motherfucker. It's okay. <laughs> you called in before a stranger. Like you know you can say anything you want on here. Do you I don't know if I can say whatever I want, but if we're for Balls Mahoney, I'll say it. You're a crazy motherfucker. Well, so I, I can meet through the phone and catch you. <laughs> yeah. I don't, what's, I don't what's quite know what that is. I didn't hear. I, I, I think I'll let someone. Else. Well, I, actually, I'll say. Have, have you ever heard the the allegation that uh, some people think you you, uh, you you've turned into like the the baseball guy from something about Mary? The what? That you met. Turned me. into Don Mattingly. <laughs> yeah. Have, have you, you heard the that? allegation that you took too many chair shots to the head and now you're kind of distant? Oh, I see what he's saying. He's saying oh, that you... oh, no, I, oh, oh, no, yeah, I can't understand what you're saying now. Um, yeah, I have taken a lot of shots to the head. I do have what is called post-concussion syndrome. Um, I do forget a lot of stuff a lot of times. Um, and if you guys, if you've probably seen online, I'm sure you have, that pussy-ass chair shot that Marty Gennetti hit me with, it just caught me in the back of the head, and I got an instant concussion, and I threw up. Yeah, that, that's that's the truth. If I get hit in the back of the head, I'm going to puke my guts up, you know. But you didn't see me afterward in the locker room where I was running around going, come on, let's get back out there, you know. I, I, you know, I felt like an ass because, you know, we were supposed to have a good 15-minute match, and all of a sudden, like, Marty's going to go. It's got to be quick. I'm like, oh, come on, man. It's me and Marty, you know. So we took it home, but when he hit me, he didn't, you know, I kind of leaned forward. He caught me in the back of the head. But that doesn't mean I can't go, man. It just means I'll hit me in the back of the head, you know. If you want to hit me in the head with a chair, go ahead. I can still work. I can still go. But, uh, no, I'm not damaged goods. I mean, I got other issues other than that. But as long as I got my painkillers, dude, it don't matter. I can still dance, you know. Well, let me, 
let me, let me tell you something. I just, I, 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 you got anything else? No, no, not much else. I, I, I just heard of you ever so recently, so I gotta start watching your tapes and stuff. I, I you've been calling in you're, the you're show for years, and you've just now heard of Balls Mahoney. Yeah, Dude, yeah you'd be say, surprised. That the, happens a lot. From really? the that, ha- that happens a lot because a lot of people, a lot of younger people, like early twenties and stuff, you know, like even younger than that, they never. They, they never seen the ECW live. You know, they're just catching up to it now. Mm-hmm. I have people coming up to me. So I go to Six Flags. This summer, I was at Six Flags every weekend, pretty much literally. Here's something you guys don't know a lot about me, all right? This just happened. I'm a respite worker. This is a part-time gig for me. It's on the books. I'm a respite worker for the ASCQ, okay? Mm-hmm. Which means because my, my, my wife's brother is mentally handicapped, okay? So I take him places, and the, so I always... We always took him with us whenever we go somewhere. And a lot of people in Jersey already know that because he goes to a lot of wrestling shows with me. You know, because there was something to do. And he's my brother-in-law, you know. Fucking matter to me. But now it's a part of it's a gig. So, but he loves Six Flags. My son loves it. We have passes, so I'm always there. I have these, like, 16-year-olds, 15-year-olds go, Holy shit, dude, you're balls rolling. I just watched the shit. You're my older brother. Dude, you're the man. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, dude, it's nice to meet you, you know, and I'll talk to him or whatever. Yeah, it happens a lot that people who never knew who I was are get, are seeing me now, and they're like, shit, how come WWE never hired you? Because they were scared, you know? I mean, honestly, they were scared to death. <laughs> now someone's calling in to play Who's music. It? That sounds like Steve Carino. <laughs> is, that the kind of, is that the kind of stuff he listens to? You know, you said that uh, uh, you said that um, WWE was scared of you. I know that they actually. I've heard the same story with uh, Mick Foley. That's why uh, they didn't want to bring him in for so 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 long. They thought like just looking at him, that was what the guy was all about. When you when you did go there and you met Vince McMahon, like, uh, or did you meet Vince McMahon? And well, how did that go? Oh yeah. Was was he cool Dude, with you? All right, here's the thing, and I'll say this straight up. And I said this to a lot of people on the street, and I've said it to a lot of people otherwise. Vince is an asshole. He is, all right? And he is. He's a dick. He's a, he's a, he's a fucking asshole, all right? But I'll tell you this. Vince is my kind of asshole, all right? And I'll tell you why. The guy's a billionaire, right? Everyone knows that. What kind of billionaire gets hit in the head with chairs, gets juice? He's already a billionaire. He did that. So he can look at the talent and say, if I'm willing to do it, you better be fucking willing to do it. Now, that's my kind of guy. It really is. Because, obviously, I work, but, dude, if I go out there and I have, like, a half ass match, I'm mad at myself. And I'm not mad at myself for, like, ten minutes. I'm mad at myself for a week, you know, or longer, or until I get back in the ring and have a damn good match to make up for the crappy one I just had, whether it be my fault or a mix of styles or whatever. Dude, even to this day, I hate having bad matches, and I love nothing more than when I go to work, a promoter going, listen, what can I do? Dude, whatever you want, how long? However long you want, and if I got someone that's willing, I'll try to put together me and RVD again. I really do. I love to go out and work my ass off because I love doing what I do. I love working those matches with RVD. But when they first knew, were taking a look at me, when they first saw Balls Money, and Vince was into it then, you know, Balls, Balls, he loved that. Then he saw some of the shit I was doing. He saw the pictures of me standing around with thumbtacks and glass in my tongue and shit stapled all over my body and me smiling, you know, mm-hmm. because... I kind of get off on it. I do. I don't give a shit about any of that. You know, I mean, look at me. I got tattooed at the, at the mole, back of my time, dude. I had, what, four in the eye. I'm talking about my piercings now, okay? I had four in my eyebrow. I had two in my tongue. I had my lip pierced a bunch of times, but it never stayed. It kept getting infected, so I just stopped trying. I had my nose pierced, uh, both nipples, and I had my cock pierced, uh, Prince Albert, two on top and two on bottom, and it was like that for three years. So, you think glass or thumbtacks scare me or staples or any of that shit? Right. Come on, I did that to myself for fun, you know? Mm. So I love fucking going out, and I love doing hardcore. I love it. This was my kind of asshole, you know? Uh, I thought John Laurinaitis at first was an awesome guy. He's a cocksucker. He's a political cocksucker. And I, I mean, no offense to him, 
that's his job, and he's good at it. You know, he's a political guy. He stirs cities. Vince is awesome, man. That's great. You're a dick, and you're good at it, John. But I like Vince. Even to this day, I like Vince. I got nothing against Vince. Mm-hmm. I got that. I got that. See, at the Garden, the, last, the first Saturday Night's Main event that they ever did in a long time was at the Garden, right? And what aired when they were doing Vince's kit. You remember this, Jack? Mm-hmm. I'm Jack, trying. To, I'm trying yeah, to remember. Well, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here with you. It was the yeah. Okay, it was the first Saturday Night's Main event. It was out. Of, it was out of the garden. Okay, it was when they were doing Who's Vince's kid? Yes, yes, right? yes. And it yes. ended up being Warren Swaggle, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, Saturday Night's Main event. What everybody saw uh, at home was Molina came out. Okay, mm-hmm. and Vince got all you know, Verschlep, right? Mm-hmm. And then Steve Austin came out, but that's not what happened. Why? What happened live was Molina came out. Then they did. Then Coach goes now, uh, Vince. Uh, you were in Asbury and coming back from Asbury Convention Hall. You had a liaison and this, like your kid. And ball, my music hits. Well, it's the garden, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm matching the garden with Dupree. It's like wrestling in the Meadowlands or in the arena, you know. Fucking twenty thousand, oh. and I come out laughing. You know, mm-hmm. so I come out and Vince is shaking his head, but his Adam's apple's going up and down. He's loving the reaction, you know, and he and he kind of gives me the look, like milk it. So we milk it out a bit. I'm like, Vince, come on. He goes, this is not my kid, coach. Get this thing out of here. And I'm like, Vince, what's wrong? Come on, look at me. You don't think I could be like you? Look at the smile, he, with the broken teeth. And he's like, coach, just get this thing out of here. I'm like, Vince, just stop. Listen, look, just picture it in lights, very big, on the marquee of the garden. Vince has balls. And Vince goes, I haven't got any balls. And with a mean Vince, and I just start laughing my ass off. I couldn't help it. I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> yeah. But the crowd goes berserk. And I go look at him. Vince has no balls. And I wasn't supposed to do that. Right? <laughs> but I looked at the crowd and said, Vince has no balls. 20,000 people for 10 minutes went, Vince has no balls. Do this, do this, do this, do this. In the garden. Uh, I remember I that. start leaving. I get up to the ramp, and there's a guy. Stay up on the ramp, conduct. So I'm conducting. And you see Vince freaking out. Right, get him out of here. He's going to get fired. I'm going to fire you. So I finally left. And then they calmed the situation down. And Austin came out. That's why when he came out, and if you look, if you go back to tape and look, he didn't get the pop. He should have. Mm-hmm. Okay? And that was supposed to be our Saturday Night's Main event live later in the night. Well, the NBC people took Vince aside, and they go, look, who was that fucking guy? And they're like, oh, that was boss. That was great. You gotta leave that in there. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. And they go, Vince, we can't leave that in there. And they're like, what? Vince fought for like 10 minutes, and finally they go, Vince, Austin's your biggest guy on the show this night, right? He goes, yeah. He goes, did you hear the crowd? After that guy, after Balls came out, it was like, someone they never saw before because it it wasn't the same type of pop. Even when he got the stunner, it wasn't the same pop as I had 20,000 people. I had to the whole show. This was the last thing of the evening. Mm -hmm. There wasn't even a match after that, you know? And I had 20,000 people screaming, Vince has no balls for 10 minutes. Uh And I didn't find out till the next day you know, when I when I'm you know, I woke up and I'm and I was like, So what happened on Saturday night's minute? They go, it didn't air. I'm like, What? And they go went from Molina to Austin. I was fuming when I showed up on Tuesday. I'm like, Vince, how could you do that, man? And he took me aside and, was, and I was upset, you know, I'm like, mm-hmm. dude, because I, I could have written my ticket with that there was a two year gimmick. I would have got a two, three year extension, you know? Mm-hmm. I was excited. They just killed my Kelly thing. You know, they fucked me out of that. I did this, you know? And then they're like, oh, we'll do it in another building. I'm like, okay, we're in Philly next week, right? Did they do it in Philly? No. Did we do it in Baltimore? No. We did it in fucking Alabama. The fuck do people in Alabama know? No offense if you're from Alabama, (laughs) but they're not easy stuff fans. You know, we were down there Mm -hmm. twice. We didn't draw shit. We never went back, you know? Mm -hmm. And I did, and we did, and we didn't even do it in the ring. We did it in the the locker room. They're like, hey, hey, hey. And I, you know, I can thank Laurinaitis for that. So thank you, John. You know, I'm not sure, but I can guess. You know, mm. thanks, uh, John. Dick. M- Mick actually, Mick Foley Sorry, actually. John Laurinaitis, cocksucker. <laughs> 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 
Do you, do you have any other? Uh, I just want to tell you real quick. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, Mick Foley actually uses that story in, in his uh, stand up. Oh, about Mahoney. Yeah, I know actually. You know what? Really right? well. he, he did a uh, he did an FTW show, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Boss, boss, can you come out to the ring? I'll be Vince, and you can be you, and we do that." I'm yeah. like, "Yeah." So he did it in the ring. You know, in fact, I have a lot. I know he does those stand ups, and he's like, "You know, you should do it." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Dude, you're fucking hilarious, especially when you get going and you got your shit in you." Mm-hmm. You know, it's no secret that I take pain to you know. Yeah. When I have them in me, you get this. When I have this, when I have them in me, a little extra. Then you get what I am like now. Now imagine adding some illegal shit to it. Now imagine what you'll get. If I'm going to do comedy, I'm going to have some illegal shit in my system. Mm-hmm. So imagine what you'll get. You know, and I'm not even talking about wrestling stories. I'm just talking about chick stories, other shit. Yeah. I can I, make people laugh. I know some people. I'd love to do that. I, I do a lot. I do but a yeah, lot. Of- you, I didn't know that. And you know what? That's a huge compliment. Yeah. And Nick, um, if you hear it, if you get this or hear about this, Nick, thank you for using that, man. Thank you so much. I love you. Uh, a lot of people might not know this, but Nick was involved in my my uh, my stuff in Smoky Mountain that turned me baby face. I actually have a pair of tights that Boo Bradley wore that Cactus Jack gave to me, okay? Oh. I still have them. Mm-hmm. I still have those tights that are sitting on a... On a uh, on a, on a dresser, uh, the dresser shelf in my in my room, I still have them. I won't even put them up in the attic. That's how much they mean to me. So that means the world to me, man. That did that, you know. Mm-hmm. And he still does it, really. Is he yeah, serious? I, he still I, does that. I seen him uh, live a few times, and he did. He actually he brings someone up usually to play right. to play your role when he does the story. <laughs> you know what? Nick, Nick, listen, you got to hear about this. I, you've got my number. If you don't have my number, get in touch with Brian at FTW. He's got it. Dude, get in touch with me. I'll fucking go on stage with you. Uh-huh. But i got to do some stand-up. you got to give me 15 minutes of open mic time and be prepared for me to bury you because I'm going <laughs> to work in the blue and fuck your world up. But, dude, I'll come and just do that and get a couple drinks. Call me up. I'd love to do it. This stuff. That'd be great. Real quick, too, I do a lot of horror movie conventions besides the wrestling show and uh, just in Chicago. Oh. Just in Chicago, uh, I was part of Days of the Dead. I did some of their Q and A panels, and whatnot. But they did this thing. It was Mick Foley and Roddy Piper, uh, like versus each other in stand up. And then they had like DDP ran in. It was just, it was hilarious. And the horror crowd just loves these guys. Like you think maybe they wouldn't get some of the references, but it, it's really over. Dude, I'd love to do fucking dude. I, you know why horror people love us? Because we love horror. I love horror. Yeah. You know who loves horror? You know these horror freak is Batman Hondo. You know that, right? Yeah, he was actually at one of the Days of the Dead I was at. He, he was there, right? Yeah, not this one in Chicago, but yeah. one of the other ones. Yep. Yeah, yeah, he loves that stuff, dude. He, he's he's wore, when we were in Mexico, he's wearing some shirts. I'm like, dude, what the fuck is that? And it was a woman impaled. It was a horror movie that was never released in the states because they couldn't prove that the woman that they really didn't impale a woman for real because it was that real. Mm-hmm. I'm like, holy shit! And I'm looking at. It, I'm like, dude, that really looks like what impalement looks like. And he looked at me and goes, How the fuck do you know what impalement looks like? I'm like, there's a lot you don't know about. Black. <laughs> You know? oh, yeah. and, he, and he's like, oh, okay. I'm like, no, that's really what it looks like, you know? And he's like, how do you know this? I'm like, well, I'm not going to tell you, but I've seen it on a cadaver. And he's like, holy shit. I'm like, well, Vlad the Impaler is my idol, and he really is. I think if we were more like Vlad the Impaler and we made the punishment for terrorism, it was not, not execution, it impalement. You know what I would do if I had caught Bin Laden? I would have shot him in the leg. I would have took it. No, I would have shot his ass in the leg. I would have brought him back to New York, and I would have impaled his ass on the spire of the Empire State Building. And once he was dead, I would have encased him in loose sight and put a big fucking sign over his head. Thus, that happens to terrorists. Mm-hmm. Six Semper Tyrannus, motherfucker. No, they shoot him and bury him and see if that's what happened to him. But I give it to Obama. You know what? Bush was in office for how long? In bed with the we, fucking we, Bin Laden. Yeah. Business-wise, you don't fucking kill him. But give Obama two years, boom. There goes Bin Laden. Mm-hmm. So we got a couple people I here. Uh, calling eight one zero eight one zero area code. Who are you? Hey, I'm Joe from Michigan. Mark. Hey, Joe. How you doing? Hey, good. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember me, but uh, I want you to tell me some good cats and ad stories. Wait, what now? <laughs> I want you to tell me some good Captain Ed stories. Captain I'm sure everybody wants to hear good Captain Ed stories. This is either an inside oh, reference. Story, this is your... story. Holy uh, shit, Captain Ed Shores. How you doing, man? Sure, what's going on, brother? You out of here? 
What kind of screw are you on here? I'm not. Oh, I'm I don't care. Okay. I just figured the rest of the world to hear what kind of scumbag Ed really is. Dude, all right. You want to know what kind of scumbag Ed is to Baltimore? Well, here. I want a, I want a good story. Hold on. Hold on. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what kind of scumbag Captain Ed George was to Baltimore. Every show I did for him. Paid me every penny he said he was going to. He always took me out for drinks. He never let me pay for anything. Captain Ed George and Balls Maloney are absolutely fine. Seriously. Well, I have nothing bad to say about Captain Ed George and how he treated me. Did he fuck up businesses? Yes. If you put me in charge of businesses, would I fuck it up with an, with an unchecked, with unchecked? Oh, fuck yeah. Give me a fucking $20 million business. See what I'll do with it in a year. <laughs> you think he's yeah, bad? What was that? You think Edmond and those fucking guys were bad? Halliburton, you know, stealing what? Fuck, spending fucking $85,000 on an umbrella stand was bad? Oh, they're going to say, uh, Mr. Rector, what did he do with that million dollars? Uh, well, I took a trip to Puerto Rico. I got a house on the beach, and I hired 12 hookers to come live with me, and I did 25 ounces of cocaine with it. And they're going to go, and what else? What do you mean, what else? That's what I did with it. I had hookers sucking my dick while the vines off their legs. That's what I did. <laughs> and what was your wife and kid? Oh, they were home with the money that you can't find. Now, fuck off. You know, that's <laughs> But Ed George is fine by me, dude. I got no problems with him. I love well, we him. We were just talking about you the other day because me and Paco and a couple of the other guys who used to go back in the day when you got when you were actually wrestling still mm-hmm. for them. And we were just uh, laughing about yeah. the good time. Now, we used to have a blast, didn't we? Yeah, it was always a good time. I, I had more fun. I had more fun after the shows and well, basically or heckling, like the uh, gorilla, uh, gorilla Barone. Like instead of using him, instead of using his lucha name, the uh, Viking, which you know might have got you know might have got him some press or something, he makes up some bullshit name and gives him a knockoff Vader mask. I know. You remember that? I know. I, fucking know. I do. I do. I know. I know. He he wasn't great with gimmicks and everything. I tried I know, to help, you know, but. Oh, he's he's hilarious. You you can you can you can tell him the sky's blue, and he's going to argue with it because he didn't tell you the sky's blue. That's exactly right. That that's true. Oh, yeah. That's true. But well, I hey, man, I was just I was just hey, I was so happy to see that you're still around and kicking. I, I've missed Dude, talking to you because you don't come to Michigan I'm anymore. I'm kicking, punching, fighting. Like, you know, come on. It says you know why you don't hear a lot about me anymore, dude. I got a kid. You know, I well, really, I'm not really hurt. Feel you. Yeah. yeah, oh, he's beautiful, dude. He's smart. Yeah, I just had a little girl. My, I just had a little girl myself. I don't know if you're, you know, if you're ever I'm sure. meeting my wife. Yeah, I mean, no, but I just wanted to give you a call. Are you the brownie guy? Yes, I am. <laughs> holy shit! Holy yeah. shit! Dude, this guy, holy shit! You want to? All right, I'm going to expose you. Dude, this guy used to make the best marijuana right, brownies. Holy <laughs> shit! He would give me this tin of marijuana fudge, dude. I would go to the, I went to the airport. Can I tell the story, Joe? Yeah, go ahead. Dude, I go to the airport and I'm eating the fudge. Okay, I got through security, and a security guard goes up to me. And he's like, "That looks good." I'm like, "Here, I have a piece." Right now, one piece of fudge. Am I right, Joe? Like one piece of fudge had the THC equivalent of like a piece of good marijuana. So I yeah, gave the cool. security guard. A piece of, I, did, I just gave the security guard an eighth of marijuana. Now, if you eat THC, it hits you three times as hard. Dude, I've already eaten, like, three quarters of a fucking, the whole tent. So he's like, this is really good, though. I'm like, yeah, here, give it out. So every fucking, all that, in that little airport, Lansing, dude, like, all the TSA people had a piece of fudge. Thirty minutes later, they're all standing around me going, what the hell did you do to us? I'm like, what? Who has some fudge? They're like, how come you're not fucked up? I'm like, oh, I am. I'm sitting. And they're like, dude. I'm like, well, what are you going to do? You're going to test positive. Your next drug test if you say anything. And I smiled. Yeah. So they all walked away from me. <laughs> dude, uh, dude, do me a favor, Joe. Give your phone number. Get get Joe's phone number for me. So I'm not giving mine out right now, okay? For I obvious reasons. You, okay. Yeah, I, I hope not. Yeah, I was just so, you know, like I said, it was so it was so nice to oh, see you know you know like doing Joe, Joe, stuff. Email yeah. my wife. Listen. Oh, by the way, if anybody is serious about getting in touch with me to say hi, you can email my wife. Now this is my wife. If you start emailing bad shit to her guys, I will and okay. besides, you're emailing. We will have an email address for you. This is my wife. Okay. Okay. I'll give yeah, that. No, no. All right, here you go. It's D U B L E. 
Oh, hold on a second. I have a pen handy. All right, well, that, come on, Stoller, get a pen. <laughs> I got one now. Put down the brownies, too. Okay. D U B L E P R D. What was it? D U B L E T B R D. D R B L E. AOL.com. All right. At AOL.com. Email her. Say, this is Joe from Michigan. This is my number. Tell your husband to call my fat ass, and I'll call you immediately, okay? It ain't going to be my friend. Kill. What's that? All right. Now, get off the fucking phone and let someone ask a real question. Thanks for calling I'll talk to you later. I'll talk to you later. All right. Thank you so much for getting in touch. That's awesome. Look at this. We're bringing people oh, together here in your head. Dude, thank you so much. This interview was worth it to hear from my boy. Dude, that guy is great. Him and his wife are awesome people. Nice. That's great. The chat. Yeah, they, they, that's, a, that, that's a true story, guys. I got the entire fucking Lansing PSA or whatever airport that was. I got them all fucked up on, <laughs> on, on marijuana brown. Well, excuse me, on THC fudge. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, nine three. That's the type of guy I am. 937 area code, who are you? Hey, this is Mike. I'm calling from Dayton, Ohio. Cool. Hey, Mike, how you doing? All right, all right. Balls, it's great to, great to hear you on, uh, on the show. And I, I apologize in advance if maybe you've already covered this, but I just, I just joined the show here about, about 10, 15 minutes ago. And I wanted to ask about some of your work in WWE's version of ECW and specifically okay. about your, the program you did with the Miz, because the Miz doesn't have a lot of credibility with fans as far as his actual in-ring work, and I wanted to know from somebody who's actually worked with him, did -hmm. you consider him, you know, very good at what he did? Was he, I mean, would you call him green or overly stiff, or what was your overall perception of his in-ring work? Miz, at the time, I was like, dude, we got to go. We gotta go. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, come on, man. We're doing, you're doing exactly what you want every night. You, to me and him, clicked. You know, and there was a couple of house shows that we worked for. I'm like, come on, loosen up, dude. Just listen to me. And we started, you know, doing shit. You know, like I'm like, what's the top? All right, stop. He's like, what are you doing? A superplex? Just take it. I don't know what I'm doing. Just go. All right. Boom. He's like, that was good. I'm like, now let's go, dude. If, if he, if they'd let us, oh, we would have tore it up. But they wouldn't let us. Obviously, they had no plans on letting us. And I, so did you both feel that. like that whole I angle was, did you both feel like that angle was kind of drawn out? Because as a fan, I kept watching it week after week and thinking, Wait, when is this finally going to go somewhere? Well, do you know where it was supposed to go, right? It was supposed to go to WrestleMania. And, then, and then, uh, the feeling that I got was that it was supposed to go to somewhere big, but it just kind of, you know, well, it just let, kind of petered out. Was, uh, it was supposed to, it was a, well, because they fucked me. I got <laughs> period. All right. Yeah. But it was supposed to go to Mania. And uh, it was supposed to culminate, of course, with me kicking Mrs. ass, getting Kelly's contract, and doing the big old kiss in the ring. And I was actually going to have my dentures put in by then and have my hair cut a little bit. You know, seriously. You know, they were going to clean yeah. me up, and that was going to be the thing. And then, I, obviously, I was going to go over on this. He was going to do this thing. You know, I was going to do mine. And then uh, my son was born, and I took off for the birth. I took a week off. <laughs> And now, originally, when I went to and I went to Vince, and I said, Vince, listen, I, and I knew three, two months before the birth that it was going to be a C-section. All right? Mm-hmm. My wife does not like needles at all. Okay? Like, the first time I was around her, she gave blood. She scared 15 people out of the ER. I swear to God. <laughs> like a phobia. No, like a serious psychological yeah. phobia. Okay? So I knew it was going to be a C-section. And I went to Vince. I go, Vince, you don't understand that. She's going to be in bed for a month to three months from this. She really is, okay? I need, I know the TV schedule is fine, okay? I thought I was on a TV schedule, and I go, when can I expect to work out? He goes, well, as long as you're going to get in shape and you'll be in shape, I'd like to push it for this. I go, that's great. When the birth happens, can I have two to three weeks off? I go, consider it maternity leave, but for a father. And he goes, course. And I'm like, you know how important this is to me? Because I told this. I go, you know, I, I was a product. My dad took off of my mom before I was born. I'm not doing that for my kid, you know? Yeah. So, sure, of course. So, I knew the birth was going to happen. I went to John. I go, John, listen, uh, this day is going to be the C-section. I need the next two weeks off. Oh, you can't do that. 
hell are you talking about? I already cleared this with this. Oh, you can't do that. It screws up the angle. I'm like, it doesn't screw up anything. I admit that. I'm just doing something to me here. Do something. I go, what the fuck, dude? What are you talking about? This is, this is eternity leave. I can sue you over this. You know? You yeah. can't do this. You can't do this. This is, if I was a woman and this was the other way around, John, I go, you'd lose your job over this. So I said, fuck you. And I went to Vince and I go, Vince, my wife's having birth. I want the next week off, okay? And I'll be back to work the following week. And, he's, and I go, well, my angle be here. So I just told John off because he gave me a bunch of shit saying I couldn't do it. And I just told him I'll have his fucking job because if I was a woman, he goes, of course, the balls, your gimmick, your angle will be here. You know where it's going. You're safe. And so I went and apologized to John. I go, look, I overreacted. I talked to this. Everything's fine. I'm really sorry. Please don't fuck with me. I'm sorry. And I know you could. I know you have the ability to make my life hell. Please don't. I'm really sorry. That's how much, that's how strongly I feel about my son, Christopher. I had already named him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he was born, and when I came back, and he crapped my angle, Kelly was upset, and it's like, oh, and I'm like, ah, fuck it. And I go, so when are you going to fire me? He goes, what? I go, so when the fuck are you going to fire me? I'm going to fire you. You know I'm like, you know what, John, whatever. Whenever you're fucking ready to get rid of me, I'll be ready. All right? So I went home, and I told my wife, I'm like, look, they're going to fire me. Time to quit. I had to call PNA. Let's get the fuck out of here, you know? No! She was so postpartum that she made me stay for the bullshit check I was getting every week. And every week, I'm like, I, the next month, I'm like, I got to get the fuck out of here, Dale. Yeah. They're going to fire me. They're trying to bury me on TV. They started putting me on, 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 the, on, the, uh, on the board, okay, with guys who never worked the match. Like three minutes with their name underlined, but of course when I was like, oh yeah, sure, and then when it was time to go over it, they couldn't find me anywhere. And I was reading a book. I mean, I wouldn't tell them where I was reading, and they couldn't find me, <laughs> so they couldn't. They'd have to replace me, so I didn't allow them to squash me. Actually, the last match I did, I got squashed by Viscera, which I had absolutely no problem doing. This is awesome, people. And Taker ran out and did the choke slam on me, you know? And I yeah. did that specifically. Taker came up to me and goes, you know what's happening. I go, I have a kid. I don't want to quit. My wife's postpartum. Fuck that. He goes, well, dude, do the match with this. I'm like, I intended on it. He's like, really? I go, no, I love this. I'll do it. He goes, well, I told him I'd come out and choke slam. I'm like, fuck, yeah, dude, that's great. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you know, I was all excited for it. I thought he could do something during with Taker, which is what I thought they should have done with me in the beginning. You know, they gave me the Cena match. I went, now, when are you going to put me in with Taker so we can outdo what you and Bully did, you know? And Taker yeah. looked at me like I was crazy. I go, no, I don't need to go through a cage or go off the top of the, uh, of the hell in a cell, but believe me, we can die, no things we can do to top. And I'm thinking, you know, 20 different versions of the Flaming Table Bump, you know, that he can do to me. I'm thinking of a, you know, Honestly, I'll say it now. I was thinking of off the apron through a flaming table with barbed wire and thumbtack tombstone where I take it. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Where he just lets me go ahead first and I go into it and then there's like a coffin underneath. I thought that would have been amazing. <laughs> you know, and I was running these things by them. As I said, they were scared of me. I'm running these things by John and Arn Anderson's looking at me like I got 20 heads and he started disliking me right then, you know? And honestly, Fuck him. I love Warren Anderson's work. He's a great he's a great worker. I always thought he was a great guy. Fuck him too. He's a political guy too. Sorry, Arn. You know what? I get sorry, buddy, but you are and you're saving your job. But fuck you. Okay. Made my life hell in Ireland that trip. I was worried about my job, I'm not anymore. Go fuck yourself. Um, well it, yo, well Bob, I, I know, know that, that compared know Yeah, I know that compared to the Dude, rest of your time? career oh, the, the what's that? I said, what time? Holy shit, is it 9.30 already? <laughs> Guys, we got about 10 more minutes. Well, I got a five-year-old. He's waiting for yeah. me at home. So, I wonder why my wife Well, thank you for calling in, Mike. We got about time for two or three more questions. Yeah. Thanks for calling yeah. in, Mike. I'm going to get to these other couple other people. Thanks a lot, Jack. Thanks See for you. calling in, man. Yep, no problem. All right, Mike. Thanks for talking to you. Let's All see. Right. We got a uh, Mad Man Mad Maple. Man Maple. <laughs> hey, hey, Matt. Hey, Matt. Hey, you, boss. How's everything? Yeah, it's going, man. It's going. How about you? Ah, I'm sick, but other than that, I'm doing okay. Hey, I got a serious question for you. Sure. Uh, have you ever have you ever fucked a girl's armpit or a guy's armpit? Have I ever what? Have you ever fucked? Put your dick. 
Oh, in a I girl never farm pit. The roller guy's own pit. Oh, I've never done that to <laughs> Oh, <laughs> dude, have you? No, I haven't. I was, I was wondering. You're, you seem like the kind of guy who would do that, knowing the freaky no, shit you've done with lads and whores. No, you see, see, here's the thing. You, yeah, fat, whatever. You're making fun of me, dude. I probably fucked your mother before. You might be my kid, all right? So get the fuck out of here and let someone have a serious question, all right? Go home to your mommy and cry. She probably sucked my cock and swallowed it. Now get away. Uh, we got another caller here on the line. Who is this? Call him with a block Hello? number, so I don't know who it is. But I do have a question for you, because uh, we've had him on the show a bunch of times, and he's really outspoken, works for uh, Extreme Rising. That's uh, Luke Cox. I just want to know uh, uh, what your thoughts on uh, on Luke is. On Luke is? Uh, Luke, Luke Cox. I think me and him could tear the fucking house down. Mm-hmm. Seriously. I think we could get they would let us. <laughs> yeah. I think it would be fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I think he's got talent. I think I think we could dance and dance well. And if he doesn't want to dance, I think he's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very good shooter. People should know that by now. Mm-hmm. So well, I'll, I'll I don't say, really tend to do it. But he's a guy who's uh, very mm-hmm. critical on a lot of the original ECW guys. But he uh, he did say nice things about you. Cool. Yeah, he's awesome, dude. I'm serious. We could really fucking go. I think we could. Dude, there's not a lot of guys out there I don't think I could dance with. And there's some talent out there that you put me with them and you put us in the right situation. Fuck yeah. Mm. Dude, I love Homicide. Homicide is one of my favorite oh, yeah, guys. Dude. He was first coming up. I got him some work and the promoter fucked him. I paid him out of my pocket. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I love Homicide. He's great. I wish ECW didn't shut down because Homicide would have been there. Masada would have been there. Um... Bulu would have been there. There's a bunch of fucking guys that would have been there that belong in ECW, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, Dante sent this in. I don't know if it's uh, something you know about. He says, do you remember ripping the Howitzer gun off the wall at TJI Fridays at the 34th Street across the street from the Hammerstein Ballroom? Was that during the Giant game? I think so, yeah. I went nuts. <laughs> I was drunk, and I was watching the Giant game, and I started taking shit out off the wall and freaking out, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> I think that was a playoff game, and uh, is that the game? I think that 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 might have been the game when she wanted. I don't know. We it was when we were getting that Super Bowl run back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that. I was real drunk, but I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> I almost got into a lot of trouble. I ended up leaving after that because they were going to fucking do some evil things, and I went to hit the Hammerstein, and Paulie's like, "What the fuck are you doing? Why are you trying to fucking get us fucking get out of here?" I'm like. Dude, we won. Hey, oh, fuck you, care What are you doing that kind of shit for? I'm like, I was drinking the anger. Everyone was fighting for me. What do you want me to do? <laughs> fuck, how much anger do you drink? I go, about two bottles? He's like, oh, well, go sober up a little bit and get ready. I'm like, okay, thank you. And I went and did my thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, there's been some crazy times. All right, one more well, question. Let's go. Well, I just really want to let everybody know uh, next week, December 29th, Extreme Rising, Pennsylvania National Guard Armory. And I also let everybody know, the very next day, you can actually order it and watch it for uh, download off uh, High Spots. It's uh, really good. It's only like 10 yeah, bucks. I right? heard that, that you can, you can get it online. Yeah, everybody who can't see it live, I really, 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 I can't stress this enough. I can't believe we're not doing it live this time. But you know what? I can't. I really can't stress this enough. If you don't go get a chance to go see it live, for real. Download it the next day. This really is the closest you're going to get to the original ECW done by the guys that were there. You know? You're not, I mean, seriously, we're all the last picture. So Perry Saturn, Raven, you know, Shane, Balls. uh, It's Jerry Lynn's last man. And fuck, the FBI. I mean, I'm forgetting guys. You know, Rhino. I mean, come on. It's loaded. I mean, how can you not give it a shot? And you know what? I have a message out there. I have a message for the people that banned out the first show and get the refund, and then the second Philly show. You know what? You fucking people can go get stuff, because you weren't really ECW fans. Because if you were, you would understand that we're building something here, and we can't start the fucking company by going out and going completely crazy. All right? Give it a fucking chance. Stop being a dick, because all you refund people are making it harder for the people like us to make something special happen, which 
trying to do. We're trying to make something special. We're trying for lightning to strike twice. Do you know how hard it is? Do you have any idea how lucky we all were that ECW got to do what we did? We were going up against Vince and WCW. And at one time, we were the number two company in the fucking world for almost two years. We were beating WCW. And if anybody has any questions about how popular we are, one word, Hardcore Justice, the TNA, they brought us in for that. Do you know that the best buy rate that TNA ever did on their own, the ECW guys quadrupled it. So that's for you, Hogan, and Bischoff, and all you fucking guys who thought we can't draw. Your best buy rate ever didn't have any of your fucking guys on it. So fuck you, all right? You want something good, to take a fucking chance, people. Give Extreme Rising a chance. Homicide's there. Ruckus is there. He would have been in ECW. Masada was going to be there. And I can promise you, if I have anything to say about it, Masada will be in Extreme Rising. Okay? And the great thing about Extreme Rising is we all, the people who are in charge, listen to us. Think about that. They listen to us crazy fuckers. They listen to me. I wouldn't listen to me. Well, yeah, I would, but I'm not normal. You know, but seriously, people, give it a shot. Trust me, it's well worth your money. It's well worth your time. And put it this way. I just, you know what? The first Extreme Rising show, do you know what I met my, that night? I met, and I didn't even know that she existed until this past April. I met my half-sister. Really? She met me for the first time at Extreme Rising. It was the first wrestling show she ever went to, except for the wrestling she's seen on TV because her husband's a huge fan and knows who I am. So, unfortunately, he couldn't come. She didn't want to bring the nieces. So she watched that show, and she said that entire show was the most amazing thing and better than anything that she's seen on TV has been. So you people that complain, go suck a dick, go fuck yourself, okay? Anybody out there that wants to see good wrestling, some hardcore, some fun stuff, and see the old friends, and see us all have a fucking blast, and do what we do best, to see what New Jack does best, to see what I do best, to see what Perry and Shane and Raven and the FBI and everybody else does best, what Guido does best, then you watch Extreme Rising because you're not going to really see it anywhere else except there. I want to thank you, Jack, for having me on tonight. I'm really sorry to cut it short. Wow, it's been over an hour. Yeah. But I really got to get home to the kids. That's cool, I am man. a father now, and that yeah. comes first. I really want to thank you for coming on. we got a full chat room. Everyone's saying here it's been a classic interview. Ball's a great guest. It's Everyone's loving the show, so I really appreciate you coming on. Can I say one more thing, dude? Of course. All my fans out there, and I really mean this, and like Joe will tell you, my weed buddy, dude, you guys know I really don't hide anything from anybody. I tell the truth. I speak my fucking mind, and if people don't like it, they can suck it. You can fuck it. I don't care. You know, thank you, because without you, there would be no balls, and I would be doing nothing. Thank you so much for supporting me for all these years. And trust me, you keep supporting me, and I'll still give you good fucking memories. And I will give you guys something to talk about. And if you've been listening to me, and if you had more time, I'd be fine.